Beats and bloggers. Stay with Gemma as she gets the latest from the UAE's biggest influencers. I'm excited to welcome on the show the online business guru of the Middle East, Saigon Yasin. Welcome. <laughs> yep, good morning. Now, I could spend the whole interview simply listing all your awards and accolades. There are so many. But simply put, you're one of the youngest and most successful entrepreneurs here and the founder, CEO of SellAnyCar.com. But to think, it almost all didn't happen in your initial pursuit to become a plastic surgeon. So what caused this major detour? Oh, my God. How do you know that? (laughs) (laughs) I did my research. Yeah, I actually wanted to become rich when I was 18, 19. I mean, I wanted it long ago when I was like maybe 10 and saving my pocket money. But when I was 18, 19, I figured who makes a lot of money? I thought it was an aesthetic plastic surgeon. And I actually did a voluntary internship at a surgery and I figured it's not glamorous at all. Nose jobs aren't your thing. And the doctors always told me, you need to be at least 35 to maybe think about making your own money. That was too long. So you're impatient for success immediately. I mean, success is is a very subjective term. I was, I was, back then I was very narrow-minded towards money. Now it has changed a lot. And recently, earlier this year, your success story was shared at the World Government Summit here in Dubai. Now, if we could rewind to 2009, you just landed the first time in Dubai with a backpack. You're 24 years old. What would you have said if I said that to, that, that was going to happen? What oh, would your response be? I would say I, I wouldn't bet on that. But I mean, you know, I didn't even look that far. Uh, I, w- I was just I was just looking at the next day. What do I have to do the next day to make my goal a reality? So, yeah, I would just say it's a nice speculation, but let's see. Certainly never saw it from that moment on your horizon. (laughs) And you have also shared that the UAE is, well, part of your your home now, but also you relate very much to it. You feel like it shares your startup mentality. It's very forward thinking, modern. It's all about technology and implementing it into people's lives. So how has that influenced your business here? I think it's perfect. It's like working in an environment where people support you without any, I mean, we're not steering the government, but the government actually knows exactly what entrepreneurs need. And you've seen it recently, what has happened. I mean, the new laws being implemented, it shows how entrepreneurship is being supported. And that's just going to come back to society. I believe entrepreneurs are the most important individuals when it comes to charitable work even though it's not charity itself but if you give people means of feeding themselves i believe it's really beneficial for society so at the end everyone will benefit yes continuing on that um, point of thought so i know you're a big non-believer of charity more in the sense that you prefer to give people equip them with the right tools to feed themselves so i imagine this is the underlying principle with your initiative the startup hero program yeah I mean, I, I'm not a very big supporter of charity and traditional means, right? But it doesn't mean I don't do it. It's just I don't believe that's going to be the most sustainable version of it. Startup Hero is something which supports entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs and gives feedback, mentorship and potential investment. So, yeah, I have great team members already who came out of Startup Hero. And do you see the value in that platform because you know personally how a mentor has shaped your where you are to date in your business not only one i believe there are always key individuals in your life you don't recognize them before you meet them but then when you look back you know that these people were really key in your life and and yeah that is important i believe the the closest five people in your circle make up yourself Mm, very valuable point um i am wondering did you bring me any of those gold sugar cubes for sampling (laughs) (laughs) actually uh no i haven't i'm sorry (laughs) Well, I'm pretty sure they're not part of your strict uh, (laughs) fitness regime right now, so you can send them my way. I'll be back chatting with Saigon Yasin just after this one. It's Don Diablo and Betty Who, higher, 97.8, Dance FM. Live now on Instagram, Dance FM UAE, I'm back chatting with Saigon Yasin. So he's not only one of the Middle East top entrepreneurs, he's founding one company per month. Your business acumen. It's worth its own currency. So what advice would you offer young business students? 
one very important advice. I mean, look at your activity level. That's very, very important. All your life, you're preparing for something, right? You go to school, you prepare something. You start a job, you prepare to become maybe a department head. But how much time are you actually spending on doing things you want to do, right? Usually, it's like 10% only. Switch that around. Do 90% of the times and think only 10%. I know that you spoke recently at the Founders Summit in Germany and you shared this point about flipping that ratio, more action, less prep. Now this resonates me with me quite a lot, Saigon, because um, you yourself, you've openly admitted having some OCD tendencies. I'll also admit I've, I've got a bit of a perfectionist side to me and I find it can almost be paralyzing. So how do you overcome what can be a somewhat destructive pressure that is self-inflicted yeah don't be a perfectionist in business it, it depends on certain businesses right if you're a pilot be a perfectionist <laughs> if you're a surgeon be but an entrepreneurship generally just just make it happen right because you have to pivot away from the first thoughts anyway usually the first six months is going to be totally different than what you thought so you have to change anyway so don't overbuild or over engineer in the first uh, year at least so be very flexible, open-minded to anything that comes your way. That's correct. I like it. And I know you are a favorite of metaphors, particularly the basketball scene. Do you want to share that with our listeners now? Oh, which one? I have I, so I many. I feel honored to hear you say it live. <laughs> no, the oh, one yeah. about shooting a goal. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. That's about risk-taking. A lot of people tell me, oh, entrepreneurs, it's a, it's a very risky field, right? I mean, it's risky if you only try once. But if you have a basketball game, right, and you only shoot once, that's risky. But if you shoot a hundred times, you will hit once, at least, I hope. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> All right, I'll try. I'll let you know. Now, um, belated congratulations for your birthday earlier this month. I saw that Mo Vlog sprung a surprise party on you, personalized cake and all. Um, now, being in front of the camera, that's not something you're shy of, though. You've also got your own YouTube channel. Why did this come about? Um, I believe today PR 1.0 doesn't really work alone anymore and what I mean with that is the traditional media with magazines and TV and radio which is great but you need to add one more layer and that's PR 2.0 which is social media and giving your companies a face especially startups they need trust and if you don't have a face representing the company and standing for it and say look this is who we are then you will have a dis disadvantage. So as we know, social media, it's booming. And I know you like being a pioneer. So obviously that was a huge appeal for you to get on board. But what I'm really uh, inspired by, Saigon, is your savvy attitude. You're acknowledging its power, the future importance of it. And like you say, traditional PR and marketing, it's been completely revamped. Now you've right. got to be a face of your company, particularly CEOs. So you started that process. You mm -hmm. are making your brand a personality. Mm -hmm. How are you enjoying being in the front line? I believe it's a very uh, edgy endeavor because at the end of the day, it's not easy. You can make mistakes, which can be very great for your company. So, But you, at the end of the day, at an as an entrepreneur, you need to take the risk and master it. So I believe I'm one of the pioneers because in the beginning it was very looked at me as why are you doing this? Isn't this something for children? But now more and more CEOs are coming online and showing their faces and those who don't are about to retire. Mm -hmm. So you certainly see the value of social media, not just socially, it's also business minded. It is, it is vital. And you have personally decided to keep quite general across all platforms, whereas for example Elon Musk huge entrepreneur in the tech avenue uh, he has focused on Twitter um, but you want to stay across all boards yes I believe Twitter is for old people <laughs> <laughs> and we're calling Elon Musk old no, he, 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 I don't know he's 47 yeah so we're not going to talk decide. numbers here did you notice I didn't say how old you turned I was being quite diplomatic <laughs> no I'm just kidding so at the end of the day he is doing really well on social media he's present and he's one of the role models you can have as entrepreneurs today even so i could pick your brain all day keep you trapped in here but i better let you go i know you've got a strict schedule thank you so much for joining me on the show thank you appreciate it you can rewind and watch our full beats and bloggers interview dance fm uae